could you spell that for me? Sure, please? it's R Y A N C O L L I N S. Okay. And who are you with? Uh, I'm a board member of the Midwest Writing Center. Uh, also an interim uh, board administrator for the Writing Center. Uh, I teach at St. Ambrose University in Scott Community College, and uh, I write and poet, musician, things like that. And your, the Midwest Center is located? Uh, the Midwest Writing Center is located uh, in the Bucktown Center for the Arts, uh, which is in downtown Davenport at 225 East 2nd Street, uh, Suite 303 uh, in, da in Davenport, Iowa, 52801. Do you have a website? Uh, yes, we do. It is www.midwestwritingcenter.org. Okay. Our interview is um, in regards to the back or behind the scenes with Biggie and sure. uh, the Midwest Writing Center. Mm -hmm. So as I had uh, started off asking um, your curator position, um, how would you say you went about, or what would you say the advantages of curating, your curating process? Um, I guess I curated more of the poets, more than the poems. Um, uh, I've just, I've been uh, from around here and spent a lot of time around here and uh, uh, between personal contacts and uh, the writing center, I was able to get together a group, a decent sized group of poets that wasn't too small and hopefully wasn't too big uh, for the project. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I just contact people uh, once I had met the Biggie a couple times and kind of knew what they were looking for and what they, in broad strokes, what they were wanting to do. Uh, I contacted a few people and uh, luckily everybody said yes and then it was just a matter of getting the images in front of people and getting the poems back from people and figuring out which poems would be a good fit uh, for the project. Most of the poems that people submitted um, I sent along with the Figgy. There are only a couple that I didn't. Um, so we ended up, I think, with eight poets, counting myself, 30 poems, counting mine. Um, and I mean, uh, you know, other than the, the timing of all of it, it was pretty, uh, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Nobody said no, so right, that was cool. So would you say that's the advantage of, cur of the curatorial process? Oh. Um, and if so, what would the disadvantage of the curatorial process be? Uh, the disadvantage, like so many things, is responsibility, I would say. Um, but it's also an advantage, I guess. It's kind of two sides of the same point. So when you say responsibility, you mean a lot on your Being responsible hands? for getting all the poets together and getting all the work that they need on time and writing the didactic on time and all that, um, just with everything else that I have going on. Everybody has hectic schedules. Um, but it was fine, and it was, you know, I mean, this is, I'm a poet. This is, like, what I love to do, so this was fun more than it was. It was fun responsibility more than like uh, job related responsibility. This, it didn't seem like laborious, let's put it that way. But uh, the advantages, I guess, um, uh, it's the same advantages I think as any editorial process and where you get to put uh, people on and uh, kind of showcase people that might not otherwise um, have that kind of audience. Um, some of the poets, uh, one of the poets is from an internship program that I run. Um, she's been in the program a couple times. It was cool to give her sort of a larger audience and have her work up on the wall. And, and her name is? Uh, her name is Nikki Steinbaugh. And she's a poet? She's a poet. Uh, she's involved with a theater company around here called Prinzy Players. Um, this is the third, uh, 2012 is the third year that she's been in the YEW program. Uh, she's really, really talented, and uh, she was one of the first people I thought of because I thought uh, it would be a great opportunity for her to uh, get involved with a kind of bigger community project and get her work a little more audience and a little more attention. You know, now it's up on the wall at the Figgy, and hopefully uh, hopefully that's good for her. Um, Kathleen Louise was, was another person. I didn't really know her very well. I just kind of knew her from readings and uh, events around here. And, um, I'd just seen her read a few weeks before I started contacting people, and I thought she did a really nice job. And so she was one of the first people I asked to come on board. And um, same kind of thing. You know, I, didn't, I don't know that she publishes a whole lot um, compared to someone like Aaron M. Bertram, who has a lot of chat books and uh, you know is pretty well known, pretty well established on her own. Um, you know, I've published a lot of my, my work uh, 
I've been fortunate to have a lot of my work in, in print and online and things like that. So I wanted to have a good mix of people um, who, who have that experience, who are more established and, and kind of down the road on that, and then some other people that are just maybe starting out or maybe weren't thinking so much about, um, aren't thinking so much about publication or things like that. And I think we had a, a good mix as far as um, ages and, and, and things like that, um, and, and experience level. So that was that was the main advantage I think is getting to showcase a lot of people that otherwise probably wouldn't have been showcased in this exhibit. So so that's what your role was um, in taking on this project. Did you have any concerns um, during the tutorial um, process? Oh, uh, not really. I mean, once we started, once we had a couple meetings, um, uh, and, and I kind of knew what people wanted and what the figure was trying to do. I mean, they were pretty clear on what they needed from Maya, which I always really appreciate. Um, and, you know, Anne-Marie was really great to work with, and now Melissa. Um, it's been really, really smooth, and um, I, haven't, I haven't had any hang-ups or anything like that at all. You know, they, they just, they, they needed poems, they needed poets. Um, once they knew what works were going to be included in the exhibition, um, it was just a matter of either getting images to the poets who were going to contribute or getting the poets down to the figgy to check them out. Um, and that, see, the figgy helped out with that. Andrew was a big help as far as the uh, curatorial, uh, or as far as, um, you know, getting all the uh, the uh, the pieces ready for the exhibition. Uh, we had access to them in storage, so some of the people got to go down, and I got to go down and see them in storage. I know some of the other poets did. And then he sent around high-resolution images, which obviously made it really easy for everybody. So anytime we needed help from the figgy on, on, on a particular issue or whatever, they've been really, really helpful and it's been a super smooth process. Awesome. I think everyone's been, I haven't heard any negative feedback from any of the, the people on the, the poet, poetry yeah. and the thing, so yeah. it's been really, really easy. Okay, so then if I asked um, what aspects did you find difficult and what aspect did you find exciting, how would you bottle those up? Um, difficult. Uh, wrangling poets is difficult. <laughs> um, I mean, I think like any other like group of artists, I think there's just a certain amount of like coordinating schedules and making sure that everybody knows what the deadlines are and what needs to be in by the deadlines and how best those things could be formatted. You know, a lot of that's on my end to communicate, uh, and they, for the most part, we didn't have any any problem. The only the only kind of snags were a couple people either teach or our students, and our deadline to get the poems to the figgy and everything were right about the time, uh, right around finals. So that was a little hectic as far as um, people trying to finish up with the semester or get their final grades in, and then trying to write and finish up these poems and get them in on time. Uh, didn't end up being a problem, at least not from anything that I heard. How about what the most exciting aspect? Oh, just uh, getting to showcase a lot of uh, a writer, you know, bringing together a group of writers that aren't, I think they all know each other. I mean, you know, I obviously know all of them, but I don't know that Sal, uh, Sal's really involved with the Writing Center, um, and he and a chat book come out. Shay Doyle, who is the other board member who helped out with the project. Uh, you know, I don't know that he knew all of those people, so it was cool to get people that aren't necessarily, it wasn't like one group of friends or one group of people from one experience level. You know, getting them all together. And they didn't really communicate. Everyone was communicating with me, and then sort of, you know, there wasn't a lot of, like, cross-talk between the different participants. So it was cool to see them come together at the uh, opening reading and see everybody's work, and, um, get to talk to people, and get to talk to each other see everyone's reactions. We had a great crowd. And, uh, I think it was really gratifying for a lot of them to, to see people read their work and respond the way they did, which, at least to my experience, everybody had a really favorable, positive response. So that's probably the most exciting thing. And I mean, getting to write poems that I otherwise, you know, on a selfish level, I guess, like getting to write poems that I wouldn't have been able to write otherwise. And getting to read the figgy, that was pretty awesome. Um, I never would have expected to do a poetry reading um, I hope I get to do it again. Um, yeah, that's really that, cool. that follows up with my last question. If you were to do this process again, what would you do differently or similarly? Or? Um, 
what I do differently. Well, what would you add on? Where would you see it going? Um, yeah, I would maybe try to ask more people, but I mean, part of limiting the number of participants was to make it manageable for everybody, you know, um, rather than trying to get 20 or 30 poets, you know, um, to write like a poem each. I think it was easier to try to get uh, a handful of people to write two or three or four. Um, what else would I have done? Um, maybe more promotion. You know, um, I feel like leading up to the, the main, uh, uh, the, the reading, the, not the, the soft opening, not as much, but the, the, the opening with the reading on, uh, what was that, the 7th or, I can't, the 14th, on June 14th, um, if we could have done more uh, flyers or, you know, um, you know, there was one article that was in the dispatch and in the print version, I think it was pretty chopped down, the online version was really, uh, really, really thorough and great. Um, but it's a great exhibition and it's something really different. And, um, I think, uh, I think collectively, you know, and, um, we all could have maybe done it. Made a little more noise about it, I guess. But it seems like it's getting good feedback and uh, I don't think it's suffering that fact too much. There were 75 people at the opening, so in my, uh, in my experience, 75 people at a poetry reading is pretty darn good. Feel pretty good about that. Well, this is just a question that I have. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say to aspiring poets or those who are thinking about it? Or anything I would like to say to aspiring poets: um, write as much as you can. Read more than you write. Um, read everything that you can. Um, be comfortable with bad writing because you're going to do a lot of it. Um, and it's part of the process, um, and be concerned with the process and not maybe the end result as much, because it's all about the process. You know, if you find good processes, they'll lead you to good things. Initially, uh, the results might feel like uh, failures, um, and uh, be patient and don't be deterred by rejection. Um, rejection is part of the process, too, so, and it happens. So, and then, yeah, just uh, wherewithal and perseverance. And reading, lots of reading. Did I say reading? More reading. Read as much as you can. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. Thank you.